Hello, dear audience. Welcome. I would like to present you, I've got the privilege and the pleasure of presenting to you Sihat Ashkin, a soloist and chamber music player, conductor and composer, educator, pedagogue and benefactor. He organizes festivals and comprehensive educational master courses. Classical musician, a virtuoso violinist, extraordinaire propagator of classical and modern, modern Turkish music. Please, Pihat, you have the stage. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure for me to be a part of the family, New Virtuoso family. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have two talented students, Harlin Zhao and Sofia Mia. First, I'm going to listen to Harlin Zhao. He's 15 years old and he's going to perform the third moment of Tchaikovsky's Violin Concerto.
Harleen, thank you very much. Um, you know, you have wonderful, you know, uh, very good technique, facilities and everything is good. Uh, if I want to ask you a question, you know, what would be your criti criticism to your video? How do you um, describe it? It's not very ac accurate, I think. And then um, the articulation, I think, is sort of flaky. A bit, and there's definitely some intonation problems uh, scattered throughout. Um, I don't know, it just feels very... Mm. Also, there are some parts which I noticed that I did miss out of this. I'm missing notes are not, not important. You can uh, catch them later. But the articulation problem, I mean, uh, you know, when you start the cadenza, uh, it's a, um, you know, a typical Russian uh, dance figure. Da -da 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 you know, you can also observe this rhythm in the other works of uh, by Ch of Tchaikovsky or some other Russian uh, great Russian composers. So I uh, found this actually a little bit uh, problematic when you, uh, for example, play. It. If you just clearly show us. and lift your bow a little bit maybe it's better to use too much bow maybe stay in a sh uh, short bow is possible because in this part of the bow you have more uh, facility what you can do is more uh, you know bites uh, would you like to try once please <laughs> Let's go on. It goes up to there, so maybe it's better to keep the rhythm as well.
problem I observed in your playing. You know, this uh, rhythmical figure, same figure. It comes different places. In few places. So time, we have the same figure. So it means that, for example, you are making too long, you know. So it means... Short. All the rhythm, uh, rhythmical structure always ta -ta 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 -ta. the first one should be short. So don't make it too long. For example, I observe that you are uh, playing a little bit longer. Would you like to start from? For example, here, what you do, what you do, all short. Okay, that I'm 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 really glad to uh, I'm really glad to see that you corrected this one. You you uh, in the video. So you are able to open the tans. You. Okay, okay. Uh, let's continue. Can you can you make it a, a little bit more crescendo here? You know, for example, starting from then go up more. Okay, that that was much better. You know, when you come to uh, dance uh, this, uh, you know, Russian. Uh, I found it too slow, really. I mean, also uh, you have two dots. tempo don't play too slow because you have orchestral accompaniment okay can you can you make more can you be more clear with the articulation not good to, to use too much maybe it's much easier you can try once
Okay, uh, uh, good. As far as I am concerned, because there is so much echo, I cannot hear you very well. But uh, you know, the general is much better. You know, when you have this uh, ballet music section, you know, means that you are uh, taking a beat with too, you know, too low. You know, it's better. Always use short bow for our upbeat. Okay. Also, uh, another thing, don't spend your bow too much. What you do? So keep your bow on sustained. With left hand vibrato and right hand. idea when you heard once you are string you know key is stay there otherwise it doesn't look good stay on G string all the time after transferring short of time uh, I, I'd like to uh, tell you that uh, octaves uh, were not very clean you know when uh, the section so maybe you know uh, observe them care would you like to take from uh, from this passage please because you know we have to finish it 25 but, um, in the last thing when you do this course all the time you just make the first one longer no keep the rhythm okay would you like to Yeah. 
Okay, I think you need to observe the uh, internet last page, especially. Uh, generally, you know, uh, uh, you know, if you, uh, you carefully observe these little things, little, uh, you will achieve your goals. Because uh, the, for me, the most the articulation. Uh, this articulation is actually uh, you know, just uh, observation of the ry rhythmical figures, uh, always in Tchaikovsky, uh, in, in, in the dance section. Uh, so, uh, if you be careful that, I think it will be a good performance. So, is there anything you want to ask me? Um, I think no. Well, thank you, thank you for this uh, enjoyable short, but enjoyable lesson. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you know, we have to um, uh, stop now because our time is very limited. So, thank you very much uh, for playing for, thank for us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bravo. 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 Uh, le yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, um, the second uh, artist tonight is Sofia Mia. She is going to perform very interesting work called Wakatipo by Garrett Farr uh, from New Zealand. Uh, this uh, composition is uh, quite interesting. So. First, let us listen to it, then I will explain about it.
Bravo. Uh, wonderful playing. Uh, it's a very difficult work, but you uh, really uh, made it very well. So uh, let me introduce the work to our um, um, you know, listeners. Uh, Wakatipu uh, was composed in 2009 by the um, uh, New Zealand, New Zealand composer um, Gareth Fair. Actually, it was commissioned by Auckland Philharmonia Orchestra for uh, 2009 Michael Hill International Violin Competition. Uh, actually, composer um, wrote the description of the piece. The title of the piece refers to Lake Wakatipu in Queenstown, New Zealand, and the Maori legend behind it. One of the great mysteries of the lake is that it's level rises and falls every few minutes. Scientists explain that it's due to changing atmospheric pressure, but the legend has it that this fluctuation is caused by the beating heart of a giant demon. Long ago, the demon abducted the daughter of a local, local Maori chief and took her to his home in the heights of the ice-clad mountains. After the long climb, he became tired and lay down to sleep. However, the girl's lover had followed close behind them all the way and set the giant on fire as he lay sleeping. His burning flesh into the ice and snow and created a huge lake, but his kind indestructible, causing the rising and falling of the water level to this day. I think you really made, uh, you know, you really describe it very well by playing. So, for me, okay, um, this was a wonderful performance, but uh, sometimes maybe we should uh, do little breaks uh, between sections. I mean, this will make us to uh, express our feelings much easier to the audience. Otherwise, there are a few sections in this piece. For example, uh, you know, uh, rising uh, and falling the water and a uh, giant demon, uh, heartbeats, etc. Maybe it is important to show all of these features in your playing. It will be more meaningful to the audience than it will be a kind of storytelling. Because this is, uh, you know, behind there is an interesting story, a Maori story. Uh, Misterioso, Largo Misterioso, the first, the beginning of the piece, uh, it can be more mysterious. Uh, for me, it was too loud, maybe, and too fast. Uh, maybe, I mean, you know, I didn't play this piece. I just uh, uh, tried to learn because of this master class. I'll just uh, have ideas. Then I stop, begin again. Would you like to make another story now? You can change your interpretation a little bit. Use your imagination. I'm sure you can very well.
that was that was more interesting. Maybe uh, the third line you can um, you, you know tie it a little bit more because it's uh, too separated now. So these figures continue. In the second line also not too forte. We are still in piano dynamic. Would you like to start from uh, eight, please? The third line. section was very good but uh, it was kind of um, uh, not fast but um, you know uh, I really didn't catch the um, uh, figure section so for me if you just uh, do more articulation and uh, it's metronome beat is one five two it's not that fast you know uh, okay it's not press, uh, presto, but it's not 180 or something. You should be able to hear this articulation. Would you like to show uh, this articulate more, please? I mean... I mean, Sophia, Sophia, so, sorry, Sophia is very good, but I mean, here, to cut the sound. So maybe on the string, stay on the string, maybe it's easier. Yes. Yes, I think this sounds much better. That's, that's very good. So you have you have several figures there, several rhythmical figures. So uh, figures are um, you know developed from each other. So we have this one. Then same. He's insisting. So all the time, but he insists. Is put a little accent uh, in order to then you know he is developing uh, when you analyze it he is developing the rhythmical figure in seven a uh, in bar twenty one then the first uh, rhythmical figure again always. separate from each other. So, when you play fast, uh, if you make these articulations clear, then everybody will uh, understand much easier. It's, it will be easier for, uh, for us to follow the line, musical line.
Would you like to start once again, please, from presto? was very good you are starting a new section now here so make more accent but it says uh, in the fourth and mezzo piano immediately so you it, it's an effect before every accent maybe you can just stop with your bow little bit uh, nobody will understand except you so what i do i'm stopping my bow so in order to make the clear stopping my bow little second so nobody is hearing us uh, only my i i i, I hear okay just uh, try to do that please <laughs> That was that was very good. That was very good. Bravo. Let's continue, please. Okay. Yeah. That, sorry, that that's that's good. Very good. You have this figure. You have the accent should not be on the last beat. So be careful. It's 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 the first beat is important. I mean, uh, after the rest. Composer, composer intended. Composer wrote uh, uh, a crescendo and decrescendo. So he meant uh, more. And he also slurred. Da -di -da 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 -da. So maybe you can exaggerate a little bit. Uh, let's take from beginning of the pace. After every uh, double chord, stop the bow because this section, uh, is, is, you know, it has two characters the first one, then so uh, there are two characters here. The first character is a long chord, then. them clear so to make them clear you can just stop your ball Thank you. 
it's very good. Very good. Thank you, thank you. But it's, uh, now it's much uh, clearer. Uh, I mean, we have only three minutes left uh, because we are going to start the lecture. Let's go to uh, uh, and um, you have this, uh, you know, one uh, one fifty three. Can you take from uh, one fifty three, please? I will go, Sophia, sorry, very good. I would go on the G-Street. No, not to Finishing, you know, give more, more accent. Bam, 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 big diamond. Yes, wonderful. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, you know, this is uh, such a short session because of uh, our time. But uh, you, you play fantastic. I really enjoyed it very much. And uh, this work, it's very new to me, but uh, fantastic work. I mean, I would like to congratulate the composer as well. And of course, you uh, played really wonderful. Uh, I'm sure you will have a great success with this, this piece. Thank you very much for playing for us. Bravo, bravo. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, we heard two talented uh, young artists playing Tchaikovsky and uh, Vakatipu, uh, modern work from New Zealand, really fantastic. Now um, I would like to present a lecture uh, about violin playing traditions in Balkan countries. So, what is Balkan? The word Balkan is Turkish and means mountain. And the peninsula is certainly dominated by this type of land, especially in the west. The region taken from the Balkan mountain stretched through uh, the whole of Bulgaria. The Balkan Peninsula is bordered by the Adriatic Sea in the northwest, the Ionian Sea in the southwest, the Aegean Sea in the south, and the Turkish Straits in the east and the, in the, the Black Sea in the northeast. So, Balkan countries are uh, in the entire Balkan region, Albania, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Bulgaria, Kosovo, Montenegro and North Macedonia. Partially in the Balkan Peninsula countries are the southern part of Croatia, Greece, mainland, Italy, Trieste and Montfalcone region, Romania, mainland, Abruzzia, Serbia, central part, Slovenia, southwestern part, and Turkey, European part. About years ago, I was invited to new master class in Duino near Trieste of North Italy. 
I was fascinated to see the beautiful landscape of the region. We also visited Slovenia and Croatia to give concerts. The New Virtuosi is a wonderful organization created by Anish Fnar, and I'm very happy to be a part of the faculty this year as well. The violin is not only a classic, but it plays an important role of people's daily life as well as in folk music. Now let's listen to an uh, Italian folk violin in North Italy, from North Italy. So, uh, violin folk instrument in the history, uh, the long history, uh, it carried its importance when it became a court instrument in the early 16th century, northern Italy, the violin popular dance instrument. It replaced the viol as a primary string instrument of the 17th century. It was widely accepted as a court instrument and the Italian composer Claudio Monteverdi included violins in the orchestra of his opera called Orfeo. The violin was widely used in Italy, France and Germany, in the Middle European states of the time. Over the centuries it was popular with the folk music mainly and played everywhere on the streets. Noble places, uh, noble houses mainly for entertainment. When we talk about the Balkan countries where most of the countries under Ottoman land and the musical tradition of the Eastern countries were quite different from the one in the Western countries. During the master course, we also visited uh, the countries such as Slovenia and Croatia 10 years ago. I was amazed to see different violin cultures there. Let's uh, listen to Slovenian violin. Thank you, Vadim. Uh, now, uh, Vadim is going to play for us a um, uh, Croatian violin, Croatian fiddle playing.
And thank you very much, Vadim. It's a very short example. So as we can clearly observe the different styles in music making and structures of the Middle East and with different countries. The uh, musical structure of the Balkan countries generally stays in the middle of Oriental and Western countries. As the Ottoman Empire had an identity of multi ethnic run, it melted all the cultures in one cup since it was possible to maintain the individual cultural identity. This was the culture of makam music instead of tonal music. So what is makam music? As great musicologist Bruno Nettel mentioned, makam, a set of pitches of characteristic melodic elements or motifs and a traditional pattern of their use, he says. It attributes to scale consisting of a collection of tones, characteristic motifs to which an improviser or composer constantly returns and a distinct character perceived by the informed listener. There are Mites. Improvisation is the main essential in which a performer modulates from the home tone to others, eventually returning to the original point of departure. We have generally 24 scales in traditional Western system, but in the Eastern modes, the limit. Today, it is possible to see the element of Maka music in the Middle East, Central Asia, Indian music, North African music, as well as some Korean music, and of course, Turkish and Balkan music. So I will show you a little example, you know, I mean, uh, comparison for comparison. I will very simply play a D major scale in Western uh, system. This is D major scale in Western notation, but this is called a, a name of makam mode in Eastern uh, music. Called Rust Makam. So, in order to uh, execute, uh, um, you know, uh, important uh, tones of the Makam, we need uh, technical, some technical elements like trills, rit rhythmical elements, and uh, ornaments. So, I need to make, make an improvisation on D major uh, in order to uh, perform a Makam. This was a minimal a little example. So while in folk melodies from different countries and uh, it's different every country after every piece uh, so I would like to tell you so you know which technical features they used for example this uh, trills ornaments uh, and uh, melodic system is used in Albanian music let us listen to Etam Kerimash playing Kaba from Albania. Thank you, Vadim. Thank you very much. So this was an example. You know, you, you see lots of trills, ornaments, etc. Uh, of course, these countries have uh, stringed instrument traditions. Uh, not only violin tradition, but their own violins, like uh, gadulga uh, in Bulgaria. So let's listen to gadulga playing in Bulgaria.
Thank you, Vadim. So, as, as, as you see, this is uh, called Kaman, like Kamancha, uh, plate standing and uh, twisting the instrument. Now, Montenegro. Uh, we have Montenegro, uh, two musicians from Montenegro playing the same type of uh, old style. Very short examples, but you know, quite uh, important. Uh, let's go to North Macedonia now. Macedonia is a while in history, and uh, the violinist plays Jalam Jalam, a uh, wonderful uh, uh, work. Adam. Now we go to Greece. a great uh, violin virtuoso Yehudi Menuhin was in Greece and he recorded this piece with Greek musicians. Let's listen. Wonderful example. Now we go to Turkey and uh, we start the video from uh, two minutes to 33 seconds. And Nedim Nalbantolu is going to play, uh, uh, 
improvisation. As you see, there are so many ornaments, so many trails, lots of technical, technical features. So they imitate mostly human voice. Now we go to uh, we are going to uh, some um, you know um, imitations of uh, some birds. So this country is a great tradition of you know violin playing uh, imita imitation of uh, uh, birds, imitation of different animals, uh, sound, uh, nature of sound. So let's go to Romania now. A wonderful group, uh, Taraf of Haiduk, is going to play uh, some, uh, something from uh, Dobruja, uh, starting from uh, 15 minutes of the video. So, uh, you know, 
of uh, violinist Yasha Haifez, when he visited Romania, he met a wonderful Romanian violinist called Grigor Astiniku. So he heard this uh, piece called Hora Staccato. He, he transcribed it and then played it next evening for his concert. So let's listen to uh, Diniku Haifetz Hora Staccato now, playing by Yasha Haifetz and Manuel Bey. So this is a different video. Let's omit this video. So uh, Haifetz played this Hora Staccato, but so, uh, real Gregor Astiniku uh, was filmed uh, at your lifetime. Uh, it, it will be very interesting to listen to his playing as well. So, uh, video number 13. Thank you very much, buddy. We listened to the great Grigor Astiniku on uh, film uh, when he was alive. Uh, actually, you know, Romania uh, is a wonderful country and uh, raised wonderful musicians, uh, violin composers like Parognescu, and uh, but most uh, important of them was George Enescu. He was a wonderful composer, conductor, a pianist, and of course, violinist. Uh, maybe, you know, uh, 
you don't, you don't know maybe, but he's, he was the teacher of Yehudi Menuhin, Ida Handel, Christian, so many violinists. He's a great figure in French musical life as well as Romanian musical life, of course. So, so the influence of, influence of folk music uh, gave him an inspiration to compose a sonata uh, uh, on Romanian popular melodies. So this sonata uh, was a unique sonata, it was a wonderful piece. And uh, to end our lecture, we are going to uh, give this video of Yehudi Menuhin uh, playing his so, uh, sonata with Hepzibah Menuhin. Uh, I think uh, from uh, minute five, please. This was the sonata by George Enescu, number three, um, violin sonata on popular Romanian melodies, folk melodies, played by Yehudi and Epsibar Menuhin. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this was the end of lecture, short lecture, but um, generally, if we talk about uh, violin tradition, there are so many uh, improvisation in it, lots of trills, lots of ornaments, the uh, sound of nature. Thank you very much for listening to me. And thank you, dear Chihat Tashkin, for taking us by hand and making with us a tour of, of the world, starting from Russia, going through the Balkans, and then south to New Zealand. It is so refreshing to know that thank in you. spite of the uh, globalization, which allows us today to be together, you're, you're in Istanbul, myself in London, Vadim in, in uh, Tel Aviv. In spite of this, there is the preservation of the tradition, which is brought from generation uh, to the other. And not just that, it's not tradition as it was, it develops in with the times. But I'm, I want to come back to saying, Many thanks for your uh, wise advice to the young players. And many thanks for your lecture. Thank you very much. Come it back was, and do it. It was my pleasure. Thank you very much. And dear, dear audience,
we are looking forward to seeing you tomorrow tomorrow afternoon evening morning maybe um, uh, for the masterclass of elitsu goodbye and see you soon